Namaskar, as we know that April 5th is celebrated as a National Maritime Day, the day dedicated to honoring the brave men and women who spend months at sea. Yes, we are talking about our seafarers. So today's topic in order to honor this day is on mental health and well-being at sea. To discuss the topic, we have got Dr. Deepthi Mankar, founder of Mind Speaks. Apart from that, consultant at Minds Matter and a regional coordinator, Sailors Society. And uh, we have got another guest with, with us whose name is Captain Gajanan Karanjikar, uh, a name which doesn't need any introduction. My first question to Deepthi Mankar is, before putting my question, I would like to read some lines from the recent press release from the government. India has more than 500,000 registered seafarers, out of which about 285,000 are employed in a year. 85% on foreign flag and 15% on Indian flagships. Further, Directorate of Shipping I'm talking about. The Directorate is also taking steps for gender equality, which is a prime objective on on the Indian Maritime Administration for the encouragement of entry of a woman into profession of shipping. So, ma'am, my question to you as we are talking about gender equality and, uh, you know, and encouraging more and more women to join the profession. So, there are various concerns regarding the health issues uh, for women. The main and the common is when the woman passes through a natural phenomena which is known as the menstrual cycle. So in some cases uh, she is in pain, she is in a lot of stress and the job has to continue. So what is your say on that? That Because as it is a good initiative encouraging the woman but other hand we have to make such policies so that the environment is well adapted. Yeah, Gaurav. So uh, yes, firstly uh, thank you for having me and we are discussing, like you said, it's a natural phenomena as you use the word so it's a natural theme which we all women get adapted to very easily as per se i personally also feel women are pretty adaptable to a working environment now when they do go through menstrual cycles of course it's important to understand that what her body might go through at that point of time now some girls may go through pain some may not experience pain but some girls may go through pms symptoms some of them may experience back pain now, that is not a reason for them to not work, all right? They need to understand and I'm, they're very well equipped with the fact that when they go out at sea, this is going to continue any which ways. So they need to make themselves stronger enough to handle that period of time. Having said that, on a sensitive note, if the men are aware that she is going through that cycle and if she's experiencing pain, usually it is for the first two days. I do, I'm not in a favor of not giving work at all, all right? So maybe at that point of time, she can handle some other job which will not cause her more pain for the first two days. And I think it's important for men also to understand that it is a biological phenomenon. I think the working environment should be such where the girl feels that, okay, I am being supported. My same question to Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. Sir, what is your say on this? Being a male and seeing the industry more as a, a senior person also. So what is your say, sir? Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, wonderful opportunity and this series that you are doing for the Maritime uh, National Maritime Day. And uh, this will bring in a lot of awareness and the topics chosen also are very great because we need to increase our outreach to the non-seafaring crowd to for them to know the seafaring. This particular topic and you mentioned about the shipping notice. See, I mean, uh, we have to look at it in this way. When you talk about gender equity in merchant marine, it is very important that to understand on a baseline that women are competent. They're competent in all phases of life, all forms of their the physical. So there is no doubt about physical strength coming down in this kind of you know thing. These are only taboos that we in a society carries, and we don't even discuss about it. So if you if you see a, a broad culture where women, I mean, I mean, you know, in the in the friend circle, they very openly speak about it. So I would encourage women seafarers who are joining to be 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 outspoken about this these phenomenons and say that I, I may have a pain I, I don't have a pain or whatever it is you know I'm going through a cycle today we are I'm, we are looking at fifty percent women joining the you know the seafaring staff I'm telling you the day will change when this happens it will bring a lot of you know equity into the, into the society I mean policies for safety safeguard. Because of male mental condition, yes. 
<laughs> should be done. I'll uh, like to bring in uh, Dr. Deepthi. I was going through a report of World Health Organization. The World Health Organization estimates that 264 million people are affected by depression globally and states that the burden of mental disorders continue to grow with significant impacts on health and major social human rights and economic consequences in all countries of the world. This is a journal statement. Now I'll come to the seafarer part. Seafarers who spend many months away from home working in challenging conditions may be more vulnerable to mental health issues than the wider population. How do you see this statement and what is the reality? Yeah, so the fact is, yes, definitely seafarers are experiencing a mental health condition, psychological distress conditions, because the times have changed uh, and things have also changed over a period of time, I guess. Uh, yes, it is a fact that a lot of surveys last year also which took place uh, have come out with data which shows that seafarers are prone to having mental health problems. So there was a study which was done where it came out 25% of the seafarers who took that survey. So they had collected data from around 15,000 seafarers, out of which around 25% of seafarers showed sign of depression. And the most surprising part was in that survey when I read it, that 48% of them said they don't know whom to talk to when they are emotionally drained or when they're experiencing uh, a psychological breakdown. That figure was most shocking to me because we are talking about 23 people on board. And imagine you having nobody to talk to or to share. Last six months have handled two cases of suicides and uh, four cases of hyper, you know, when the person has gone hyper and has got severe anxiety and panic attacks. The reasons are many. They could be because of, uh, you know, not getting off at shore. They don't get, you know, things to went out, not getting proper entertainment on board it could be relationship issues they're facing they're not able to connect properly getting socially isolated uh even the newer thing which last two years i've seen is on a rise which i'm sure captain gajanan would second that is the fear of criminalization of seafarers and who quoted that in 2021 when they surveyed only 25 percent of the nations were having the facility to take care of mental health so you see the gap. Very rightly said. Uh, I'd like to bring in Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. Sir, what is your say on the same question, please? Yes, certainly. You know, the mental health or mental well-being. I mean, uh, you know, I, CMI to CMI, we do this uh, nautical cadets uh, roundtable conferences where we handle this issue, where we discuss the topic which has not been taught to the cadets and mental health well-being is one of the topic which is going on for this quarter. And this is the initiative of CMI being a, a story, you know, part of the cadets group story. See, what has changed on board vessel? The cargo hasn't changed. The ships has, haven't changed. Regulations, yes. Shipping is dynamic industry. It's reactive industry. It reacts to the incidents and accidents. So they do change. What has changed? The workforce has changed. You know, we are dealing with millennials and Gen Z culture. Now, we need to understand this very well as to why this is happening. The root cause may not be, you know, onto the conditions at sea. The, the root cause could be the way the workforce has been brought up. Lately, man has said about surely. I mean, surely was never an issue during our time. After COVID, it has started to aggravate because of the, you know, the, the, the biological barriers came in and things like that. But, you know, I mean, uh, the surely is, of course, very important to seafarers. But first of all, a seafarer's mind condition is very important. What today Gen Z and millennials, they access they don't access a quality of life which is ashore is on ship. It's a tough field. I understand fully. You know, so so it also has a has a lot of you know jobs which are unconventional jobs. You know, like tying up ship, going to a, along going to alongside. You know, discharging cargoes. That's what Very I'm well saying. said, sir. And uh, you have given me a question about the non-conventional work on 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 the board. So my question to you is: uh, first of all, I'll start with giving an example of the United Kingdom, where a toilet cleaner does the work with a pride, and he gets gets its due respect. I have witnessed the thing myself because I've been there. So here, there are many reasons about the mental condition and well-being at the sea. So I'll take you to one specific point, which is job satisfaction. Is it only to do with the giving a quality of life, or there are some other factors? which can be improved in this area. The question starts with uh, Dr. Deepthi. Yeah, so quality of life, uh, honestly, I don't feel it always. I personally, this is my opinion. I personally feel it does not only 
revolve around the money aspect, the financial aspect. Though many people feel, oh, if we earn a lot of money and we'll have a lot of satisfaction. No, I think satisfaction has to do with a lot of other factors, like Sir was mentioning, to the current generation needs something beyond money. All right. So firstly, you know, when we talk to seafarers, when I talk to them and ask them, what will make you happy on board a vessel? So they always have these certain uh, responses, which are very similar to many seafarers when I talk to them. So one is, of course, the fact that, ma'am, we should be granted shore leave. Second thing they ask for is entertainment on board. Third thing they ask for is a better speed internet connectivity. And uh, food is another aspect which they say, ma'am, we should have some tasty food. These are things which companies can provide. I would like to bring in Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. Sir, same question to you, but I want to add a line. As she was talking about the job satisfaction criteria and stuff that we should have some entertainments and other stuff on board and good food and X, Y, Z, other things. So uh, don't you think that the government of India, DG Shipping, should put a mandate to these kind of criteria because it is a matter of matter of mental health and well-being at sea so please could you elaborate see absolutely you know uh, just to elaborate on what she has said i mean you know there's something a uh, very peculiar phenomenon with the this gen z guys is that you know fomo moment you know they always when they go on board they miss they they they, they, they feel that they are they are miss being missed out at the events at home and their friends and are so and so friend is going to ladakh what am i doing here you know, I mean, cleaning holes and bilges or cleaning, doing tangling operations in a remote, remote terminal. I'm discharging cargo with nobody to talk to. And when my friends are having fun, this could be a little disadvantage of internet as to, you know, they get the information and they feel that. So, so as she rightly said, I mean, you know, all these policies, a lot of good companies have of to engage them. So the, the point is that they are very adaptive and receptive, you know, seafarers. So we need to engage with them. You know, whichever way, and, and and you need to study your workforce. As far as these shipping is concerned, I mean, of course, they are the custodians of crew welfare. You know, first of all, I'm sure the presentation understands it. The policies are to be drawn. I mean, just mandates won't, won't do. You know, I mean, Danda won't do the shipping companies, but there has to be a ensuring that the policies, the mandates given to shipping companies are followed. Uh, my last two questions. Um... Um, I'll put on first question for Dr. Deepti again, and then I will bring in Captain Gajan Karanjikar. I was going through some reports and previous discussion with uh, some of uh, the dignitaries. Iswan, FSUI, and NUSI, and Radio. With Radio is an Indian organization headed by the Human Rights Commissioner, Dr. Mole. With due respect to him, he's doing a wonderful job. These organizations are supporting the distress seafarers. So what do you think that where we are today with the organization, what we need more and what kind of work has been done? So uh, I'll start with Dr. Deepti. Yes. So uh, if you were to ask me this question around six, seven years back, I would still be in a place that I don't know what everybody's doing. But I've seen a change now over the past uh, three, four years, three years, companies have started becoming more proactive in taking up initiatives as far as the mental health of seafarers is concerned. So I'll quickly share a few best practices, which I have come across because I'm working with a lot of companies. One is, of course, they have every company today, they have taken up a helpline number, okay, which is known as a 24-7 helpline number. Yes, NGOs like Iswan, Sailor Society, uh, you have Mission to See, all of them are doing different kind, but similar work. The goal is the same, to help the seafarer. So right. that is one thing. Second thing is if many companies start a buddy system where a senior from the company is, you know, uh, allocated to maybe one or two of the juniors or the, the trainee cadets who have joined in. So they can discuss apart from work, they can also discuss any other fear, anxiety they're going through. The third thing which I feel a lot of emphasis has been given is on training the seafarers to take care of their mental health. For cadets, we were running wellness at sea. In fact, we are still doing it with Sailor Society, where it prepares them for a life out at sea. Most important is job security. The reason why seafarers avoid talking to counselors or to this is they feel that if we have an issue, what if the company does not take us back? But I know a couple of companies who have taken back seafarers after they have recovered from a mental health issue. I'd like to bring in Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. So same question to you, please. 
Absolutely. The role of NGOs and a social working environment, you know, in any profession is very important. I mean, radio, I've been a part of them. I mean, of course, you know, I'm a global advisor to their seafaring wing. So I also do get a lot of distress calls from seafarers and where I look at it from a different perspective than rescuing them. I mean, rescuing is on my last on my mind, you know, uh, as far as seafarers are concerned, because they need to survive there. Uh, very well said, sir. My last question to both of you, Dr. Deepti Mankar and uh, Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. As, of course, we know that uh, DG Shipping is doing some commendable work. Out of that, we have got Maritime India Vision 2030. First point, initiative 10.15. That means 10.15. Launch Women in Seafarer Program. Number one. And now we'll come to the wellness part and the mental health part, in which exhibit 10.16, approach to ensure seafarers' welfare, two-pronged approach to tackle mental health hazards faced by seafarers, in which establish port welfare committee across all ports, set up seafarer shore-based welfare centers at ports, medical support and comfort facilities to seafarers, provision of recre recreational facilities, and reciprocate the success of Deen Dayal port across all ports in India. Do you agree with all these or there is something to be added to this contribution? Start with Starting with Dr. Deepti Mankar. Uh, so I think, no, I think uh, as we progress, it's important to take baby steps first. I always feel that. Like if you go 10 years back, all this was not there. All right. But having said that, we cannot say that no work is done. That would be very wrong to say. Uh, they are gradually now, see, it has to start with acceptance as well. Earlier, nobody accepted that seafarers had an issue. Nobody believed that they could have a mental breakdown. Nobody thought that they could possibly land up committing suicide or having depression, you know. So it took a while for the industry to understand that, that yes, this is a growing concern till they started experiencing it. Okay, it was not there that these issues were not there prior to COVID. The issues were very much there. But what happened with COVID? It accelerated the process. So the list which you have read out right now, Gaurav, I think that at least let's start with this because as we will start executing and implementing it, then you will realize what more needs to be added. I'd like to bring in Captain Gajanan Karanjikar. Sir, of course, I have uh, already uh, you know, uh, explained the points of uh, the Mar Maritime India Vision 2030. So I would like to read one more point. There are many which has been taken care of. Uh, encouraging shipping companies to have mental health policies. This is also a part of vision. So how do you see this whole question and especially this point? Yeah, very good question and very relevant in today's context because uh, we have seen uh, in last five years, the Prime Minister, Honorable Mr. Narendra Modi himself has got involved in maritime activities and he has been vocal about in his speeches about maritime. Maritime Vision 2030 and also uh, Amrit Kal Vision 2047. These are all his grandchilds. And I'm sure these are very well equipped, uh, you know, instruments to take them, take the maritime, take the nation to maritime path. What lacks probably in this is is probably an inclusive kind of a you know uh, a, a thing which needs to be done on priority. I hope that we with this kind of discussions and we get something good for our maritime industry and especially for the seafarers. Thank you both of you.